Three times a day, Claudia West goes to a clinic for prescribed heroin. It's been helping me keep clean from street drugs for it's over two years now. That's how BC's safe supply program is supposed to work. Replace deadly toxic drugs with a prescription, save lives. That's happening, says the province's health officer, but a review of the program highlights some unintended consequences. Where we have concerns, of course, is when diversion happens to people who are not using opioids. They say part of the problem, the opioid pills frequently prescribed aren't strong enough for people dependent on powerful fentanyl, so some users sell them to buy stronger drugs. I sold them all the time. When my appointment would come up the day before, I would hold on to one Dilata and swallow it so it would show up on my urine. The review was sparked in part over concern that the prescribed drugs were then being sold to young people. The rate of diagnoses of opioid use disorders among youth are not increasing. The review recommends prescribers have access to more potent drugs, but stop short of calling for those drugs to be available without a prescription. We're not going to get there through a medical model. We're not going to get there through prescriptions. And uh, so I'm disappointed to see that this report doesn't really address that and doesn't really push the, the ball forward. But at the same Political time, opponents say the government should the shift government. focus adopt recovery-oriented programming. So not only um, prescribed pharmaceutical alternatives, but actually making sure that there is a requirement to have a plan to help people move to the next step. Evaluating the impact of safe supply on BC's overall drug crisis is tough because it only represents a fraction of the people suffering. There are about 4,300 people who received prescribed opioids in a province where more than 100,000 have been diagnosed with opioid use disorder. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, Vancouver.